What is up, guys? It is Joe. I am back. We're talking about the Cats. We're talking about the Portal, and specifically two players in it that you should keep on your card as a K-State fan. Some people to know in the Portal, specifically a pair of bigs, a pair of big-name bigs to talk about in today's video. But before I tell you about the players and show some highlights here, let me tell you this. We are like 70 subs away from 2,000 on the channel. I think it's even less than that as it sits right now. But first things first, I want to say thank you so much because that's incredible. I mean, we started the channel like a year and some change ago and we're already almost at the 2000 mark. That's a huge testament to you guys. So thank you for that. The second part of that is that once we hit 2000, once we cross the threshold, I'll be giving away one of these lavender quarter zips to one of the 2000 subs on this channel. We gave out one at the 1000 mark. We're going to give away another at the 2000 mark. So as we cross that threshold, I will post a video with giveaway details and how to enter. The giveaway details are pretty simple. I'll put out a Google form link in the description of the video talking about the giveaway. All you got to do is put like a name, shirt size, and then a, a way to contact you. Probably email is going to be best case just so I can contact the winner when that does happen. And I will give away a lavender quarter zip and I'm excited to do that. So guys, please consider subscribing to this channel. We are getting ever so close to 2000 and it is a huge honor and milestone. I'm trying to think of something else cool to do. We might do a live stream, might do some type of Q&A thing if that's something that you guys are interested. If not, I'll just keep rolling and we'll just, you know, go from there. But let's talk some ball about the cats and two guys that could be future cats here coming up soon. The first player, because both these guys have connections to the program. The first player on my scouting card, not my scouting card, but the first player connected to Kansas State is Alabama center Nick Pringle. Now, first things first, love the last name Pringle. Shout out Byron Pringle one time. Nick Pringle was the starting center for Alabama last season on their Final Four run, so he's got Final Four experience, and he is a big name to follow in the portal. The kid spent some time at Dodge City Community College before going to Alabama, and you can see the bounce in his game. I'll start tossing up some highlights here as I continue to talk about him. This is Nick Pringle. Coming out of Dodge City, he was listed as the fifth Juco player in the country, the top player at his position, and the second ranked player in the state of Kansas. Nick Pringle is legit, folks. He is 6'11", 230 pounds, so he has that, Not it's not one of those big builds where it's just going to clog up the lane. This is an athletic rim running, shot blocking big that can do whatever you need. Both the guys in this video fit that same description, and that's the beauty. K-State has identified the type of player they want to run with next season. Nick Pringle, talking about his stats last year, obviously you're seeing him throw some crazy lobs down and do a little bit of everything for Alabama. Last season at Bama averaged 6.8 points per game and 5.1 rebounds per game on 62.3% from the field. And I know you might be thinking, well, those are small numbers. Those aren't crazy. He only played 18.2 minutes per game because they had two or three different guys that were rotating into that position. But boy, when he was on the court, he made an impact. He played alongside a kid like Grant Nelson at the power forward position. If K-State can get Arthur Kaluma back or they bring in Baba Miller, whatever the case is, Nick Pringle will have experience stretching the court, keeping things open, and he would be an absolute asset to get. But long story short, if you can't pick it up from this video, the kid is good. He would be a heck of an addition. I believe he has one year of eligibility remaining. It could be two, so don't quote me on that. That's not something I'm 100% on, but I do feel like that's the case. So Nick Pringle is our first player to watch. The dude is athletic. He's rim running. Like I said, he is the type of big that Kansas State needs to play with this coming season. It's not kind of the, you know, we all talked about Terrace Reed, and there was a lot of comments about, like, well, he's kind of a big, bulky guy on the low block. That wasn't necessarily my thoughts. I mean, I didn't, you know, I think the addition would have been great. Obviously, the kid's at UConn now, but there was a lot of commenters on the channel being like, this kid is just going to clog the lane. He's not going to do much. That is not Nick Pringle's MO. Not at all. Not one bit. Nick Pringle is a finisher. The dude can get to the lane, whether it's, you know, off the dribble or a pick-and-roll situation. I was having daydreams thinking about the kid going off the pick and roll with Doug McDaniel. There's a lot to like it about Nick Pringle, and he would be a heck of an addition. I don't know if there's been entirely a ton of interest from Pringle. It sounds like it's mutual interest from what I hear, but we'll have to watch and see. The second player I want to talk about is cut from the same cloth, so to speak, as Nick Pringle, but he's a little bit younger in his career. The second player is Ohio State center Felix Akpara. Now, here's the thing. Immediate connection. He's one of the kids that played for Rodney Perry at Link Academy. On that loaded team in 2021-2022, alongside both Terrace Reed and Omaha Baloo, Felix Akpara is an athletic specimen. I'll put up the highlights right now as you can see it. This might be the first time when I look at two prospects and say, if you land either of these guys, I would be over the moon. I guess you could make that argument for Omar Balo or Clifford Amori, but I don't know. I, wasn't, I, I know that he was the best player in the portal, so I don't want to sound like the dude that just pumps out freezing cold takes, but I definitely wasn't as stoked about Balo as I was about Amori or that I am about Akpara or Pringle, just because even though he was a really good player, he's one of the top in the portal, he was still kind of a lane clogger. And if you want to lean into this athletic running gun style center, 
you don't necessarily want that. Obviously, you'd be more than happy with the addition, but Felix Akpara, a six foot eleven sophomore from Nigeria originally, similar numbers to Pringle, he averaged 6.6 points per game, 6.4 rebounds per game, but he did more in terms of blocks. So he averaged 2.4 blocks per game. That would have been top five in the Big 12 Conference last year on 58.6% shooting from the field. You can see in the highlights, he's an athletic kid. He's able to throw down lobs. He works well in pick and roll. Played at Link Academy under Rodney Perry. That connection has been pumping out some good things. Hopefully, we can start to capitalize on that and bring the right guys in. But Felix Akpara would be a huge addition. Also, something cool, shout out Felix in the sense that, you know, we get to cheer on another Felix at Kansas State. Obviously, basketball instead of football. But both these guys have K-State ties in my heart. Uh, Coming out of high school in the class of 2022, he did commit to Ohio State. But he was one of the nation's best recruits. He was a four-star prospect by the 247 Sports Index. The 66th ranked player in the class the 14th ranked setter in his class, and the fourth best player in the state of Missouri. He had a bunch of different offers and ended up to go to Ohio State. This was the breakdown on the type of player that Felix Akpara was coming out of high school. Now, this is from Jerry Meyer, Director of Basketball Scouting at 247 Sports. This was in January 26, 2022. So it's been a minute, but this was the comparison. Long and slender build at 6'11", extremely athletic postman. New to the game, so he's raw and still learning, but he has potential to be a top-of-the-line rim protector. Excellent rim-to-rim runner. He thrives on the baseline as a finisher of lobs, dump-off passes, and missed shots. Not yet a back-to-the-basket and a -a make-a-move scorer, though that did improve at Ohio State. He's active on the offensive glass. Not yet a ball handler or passer. He has a thirst for defending, which you absolutely love. He needs to refine his defending a bit, but the passion and innate ability is there. Moves his feet well and he's quick off his feet. Has an upper-level niche as an all-around-the-basket type player. He was projected to go into the second round of the NBA draft when coming out of high school, and that is definitely still on the table. Felix Okpara would be a heck of a player. I think you bring him in, and he just goes to work, man. It's similar to the reasons, like I said, for Nick Pringle. He is athletic. He is quick. And K-State's not getting bogged down by missing on Balo, or they're not bogged down by potentially missing on Clifford Amori. And I would almost go as far to say as, like, these two guys fit the style of gameplay more than Cliff did or than Balo did. Obviously, Cliff fits the game better than Balo, in my opinion, but these two both have hyper-athleticism that you can utilize, especially with scorers around. You have multiple guys that will clear out the paint for them to have one-on-one matchups. My personal opinion is that I think Pringle is a better all-around player at this point in his career, but like I said, Felix Akpara would be a true a true junior coming into K-State. He wouldn't be a situation where it's, oh, you've already used three or four years of college basketball to get to this point. Akpara is starting at a higher level, I would say, Obviously, Pringle seems a little bit further along in his development, but if you get either of these two guys, that is a home run addition. I know the stats may not sound ridiculous, thinking like, well, they didn't average 15 and 10 or something crazy like that. These two would both be massive additions, and there's going to be a lot of people interested. Specifically for Felix Akpara, I believe the two main suitors were K-State and Louisville. There's going to be more people. These guys are both going to get tons of offers, but those are the teams to watch, and anytime we're included, I love to see that. But... That's going to be my video on these two players. I think they're both incredibly skilled and could have really, really good careers at Kansas State. If you had to make me pick, I really don't want to, first of all, but I think the only thing that would make me pick is, well, Felix Akpara has more time to develop. He's only a sophomore, so he has more eligibility. I would probably side with that over Nick Pringle. That being said, Nick Pringle is also a 10 out of 10 player. They're really, honestly, 50-50 in my mind. The only reason I would side with Akpara is because of eligibility in terms of, like, multiple years ahead. That being said, if he goes to the NBA next year, we're in the same place. So, either way, both additions would be incredible, and I would be absolutely stoked to run on the court with one of these guys as your starting center. But guys, that being said, I'm going to probably get out of here. Reminder to subscribe as we get closer to 2000 and be on the lookout for that giveaway video. I will talk to you guys here soon. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Go Cats!